Thank you, Bhagirath. And to speak in front of Bhishma Pitama of GDM, Dr. V. Sasa, it's really my great pleasure and privilege rather to give a talk in front of him. We have many close friends in the audience like Dr. Rajiv Chawla, Dr. Sunil Gupta, Manoj Chawla and many of my colleagues who are uh, close friends of mine since years. And talking on the navigating the challenges of GDM with fast-acting insulin. I have a disclaimer that I am talking in a favor of fast-acting insulin because that's what the requirement is also, but also for the USV who is supporting this uh, uh, talk also and at the same time supporting the conference. It's in a new era in gestational diabetes care. We had talking since afternoon that what should be the first choice of therapy and we all know that it's not the metformin as Shalini had talked very rightly and that it should be the insulin and what I'm going to talk that where fast acting insulin should be used in patient with GDM. So as I will be talking for 15-20 minutes only, but GDM represents a state of chronic beta cell dysfunction in the face of insulin resistance. Insulin resistance and insulin levels are different prior to pregnancy in women who develop GDM and however in GDM women insulin secretion does not increase adequately and that's the reason why they develop gestational diabetes in very simple form that why someone as some woman develops a GDM. The risk factor, the poor nutrition, diet, overweight, obesity, sedentary lifestyle, hypertension in the female side, the ethnicity. So we all South Asian, uh, we have more risk of developing GDM, the greater maternal age which is more than 35, even more than 30 is also one the risk, history of GDM, PCOs, family history of hyperglycemia and pregnancy induced mm -hmm. hypertension, they all increases the risk of GDM. Okay. The pathogenesis is very clear that there is an insulin secretion which is as per requirement it is comparatively less and there is a higher insulin resistance. So that's the reason we were discussing between that patient should be given metformin or not or insulin is definitely be given as insulin secretion decreases. The maternal complication of GDM, we uh, the mother can have multiple complications of GDM2 and along with that in lifetime they can develop the type 2 diabetes too and there are fetal risks for that we have to treat the GDM. That's the reason why we are treating GDM female for breech presentation, neonatal hypoglycemia, risk of jaundice high, macrosomic baby is more and respiratory distress syndrome with the mother, uh, with the newborn of a GDM lady. So the fetal problems which are associated with maternal hyperglycemia, that again with the first trimester, second trimester and third trimester. So if there is a significant hyperglycemia in first trimester, the risk of malformation and growth retardation and fetal vestiges are high. And this is one of the reasons that why many of our type 1 diabetes, they don't become pregnant or they have a lot of fetal vestiges or the malformation are high because of very hyperglycemia. The second trimester, if they have there are some of these uh, complications in the fetal complication which are more common and in third trimester uh, if the hyperglycemia is there, they are going to develop more of hypoglycemia, more of hypocalcemia, hyperalbuminia, respiratory distress syndrome, hypomagnesemia and even intrauterine death. So that what uh, 36 or 38 week or right time to now these uh, fetus can be monitored more continuously with the uh, sonography and at the right time, the gynecologist will decide when to have the baby out. The glucose metabolism in pregnancy, the first half in pregnancy is anabolic, which is a pancreatic beta cell hyperplasia, which causes hyperinsulinemia and increased uptake and storage of glucose. There is a catabolic, which is the second half of pregnancy, which is the placental hormone, which block glucose receptor and cause more insulin resistance. There is an increased lipolysis. There is an increased gluconeogenesis, decreased glycogenolysis, glycogenesis and increased glucose and amino acids for the fetus. Now, this is what American Diabetic Association with they are recommending, the similar to the target which is recommended by ACOG, uh, the EDA recommended targets for a pregnant woman with type 1 and type 2 diabetes is fasting glucose if 70 to 95. 1 hour post meal 110 to 140 and 2 hour post prandial 100 to 120. Now with the recent time in range the guideline which we know that 63 to 140 that is what we are recommending with someone who is already type 1 is still more than 70 percent if even she become the pregnant more than 70 percent of the time it should be between 63 to 140 the time in range and those type, type 2 or a gestational diabetes truly they should achieve 
more than 90% of the time between 63 to 140. So the tighter glycemic control and that too for more than 90% of the time, if one is using the continuous glucose monitoring, so the time in range may be a better marker of these glucose monitoring, but we will listen tomorrow, Dr. Rajiv also, he will be talking more about the glucose monitoring too. The recommended care by RSSDA is also the need for strict glycemic control using insulin, maintenance of a safe level of HbA1c, which is actually not the way of monitoring these female. Insulin is the first line of therapy for type 2 diabetes with pregnant women with pre-existing diabetes and Someone who is planning for a pregnancy should have a better control or a tight glycemic control. If adequate blood glucose levels are not achieved during pregnancy with multiple daily insulin injection or insulin infusion, then insulin pump therapy for a safe treatment must be introduced. And Dr. Manoj has already talked about when you are going to use the CGM and there are patients who can be used even insulin pump also. And type 1 diabetic patients to whom we can rent also. So I mean those gynecologists and they are there. Just to tell that the insulin pump can be given on a rental basis also if your type 1 diabetes is there and uh, they need the insulin pump therapy, otherwise they are not ready to buy the insulin therapy, I mean uh, insulin pump. The pharmacological therapy, insulin is the first line agent recommended for the treatment of GDM and this is what very clear even uh, Dr. Shalini had talked about the metformin and then she had given the recent publication also and still many of us are we are using the metformin but insulin is the first line agent which is recommended for the treatment of GDM. Both multiple daily insulin injection and continuous subcutaneous insulin infusion are reasonable delivery strategy uh, neither has been shown to superior to other during pregnancy and when to initiate insulin. It is the ACOG, IDF and DIPC all three have a the criteria when fasting level is more than 95, 1 are more than 140, 2 are more than 120, same is talking by IDF, except they are talking IDF is even more than 90 also, we should start them on insulin therapy. Dipsy is very clear that insulin is often added when nutrition therapy fails and when your fasting level persistently high more than 90 milligram and one and half hour PPG more than 120. So we are very strict. I mean not one hour which is 140 by ACOG or IDF while we are talking one and half hours not one hour. If it is more than 120 then these uh, uh, GDM female should be uh, they should initiate insulin therapy. The ADM management is also talking that insulin should be added if needed to achieve glycemic levels. Now I have here put yellow, uh, you know the marking why it is A, evidence A. So it is the insulin which is recommended by American Diabetic Association with evidence A. Insulin is a preferred medication for treating hyperglycemia in GDM. Other oral anti-diabetic agent or other oral or non-insulin even injectable glucose lowering medication lake long term safety data and that is what evidence E. So it is not, there is no evidence for using this. This is already been talked by Manoj also and uh, by uh, Sanjeev also they talked about St. Vincent declaration 10 to 12 October on 1989, a meeting which was organized by WHO and IDF in Europe, achieving a pregnancy outcome in the diabetic woman that approximate that of the non-diabetic woman. So we should try to achieve a glucose level in a GDM lady or a, a lady who is already diabetic and becoming pregnant try to achieve the glucose level as, as good as someone who is non-diabetic. The choice of insulin regime is again the ACOG, IDF, NICE and DIPSI. I had put all four. The ACOG is talking about the insulin analog have been used in pregnancy and they do not cross the placenta. IDF is talking rapid acting insulin which is Lispro and Aspart have shown to be safe in pregnancy and the usual recommendation is to use NPH or Detimir as a basal insulin, premix are convenient alternatively but they lack flexibility, this is IDF statement. NICE is saying that be aware that rapid acting insulin analog, Aspart and Lispro have advantage over soluble human insulin during pregnancy and consider their use, this is by uh, NICE UK. Dipsy is saying that it is ideal to use human insulin which is least immunogenic but rapid acting insulin analog which is Aspart and Lispro have been found to be safe and effective in achieving and targeted postprandial glucose level value during pregnancy. As we know that it is the post meal glucose level which is very high and that's very important to control. So it's better to control them with a insulin Lispro or Aspart in compared to the human insulin. These are the some of the paper 
using the insulin as part versus human insulin in pregnant women with type 1 diabetes as well as in 2 GDM, the safety and efficacy of insulin as part were reported and it was relative to human insulin. This is one paper where insulin as part versus human insulin in 322 pregnant women with type 1 diabetes and this is a uh, randomized control trial where the better postprandial control with insulin as part in compared to the patient who were on regular human insulin. So, this data shows that it is a better post meal glucose level which is get a better control. As we know that the post meal hyperglycemia is a major challenge for a GDM. So, it is a better control with a shorter acting insulin analog. Insulin as part provide better postprandial control compared to human insulin. Hypoglycemic episodes during pregnancy are also less with insulin as part as it is a faster acting only with Within two hours, that's the major challenge of hyperglycemia, better control and less risk of hypoglycemia. Major hypoglycemic episodes during pregnancy is compared to human insulin, it was in insulin as part, is again it is less. Outcome in pregnant women with type 1 diabetes randomized to insulin as part or human insulin, it has been found in severe hypo, it is less. Preterm delivery, again less in patients who are using insulin as part in compared to human insulin. Malformation was less and fetal loss. So, I can show you the all the uh, benefits of using and there are this is the randomized control trial which was published long back even in 2007. The perinatal outcome using insulin as part compared with human insulin, the live births both 137 and 131, perinatal mortality was human insulin absolute increase in human insulin in compared to insulin as part. Fetal loss, 14, 21, miscarriage, late spontaneous abortion, termination of pregnancy and stillbirth. Stillbirth are same, both that miscarriage was 12 and 15 and neonatal death was uh, 1. It was an absolute number was slightly high uh, in compared to the human insulin. The congenital malformation, again insulin as part was better in compared to human insulin. Whether this is cardiac related malformation, NLK fairly, CNS malformation, congenital hydronephrosis, congenital tongue anomaly, telips or fetal chromosomal abnormalities or were found to have less. No evidence to suggest that insulin as part crosses the placenta and this is the major concern for physician or gynecologist or for neonatologist that whatever the molecules which we are using during pregnancy, it should not cross the placenta and there is no evidence to suggest that it crosses the placenta, there is the insulin as part plus NPH when it was compared with human insulin plus NPH, uh, there was no data to support that. This is a one paper which was published in Journal of Midwifery in Reproductive Health, a comparison of the efficacy of insulin as part with regular insulin for managing gestational diabetes and their effects on a delivery outcomes and found to be safe and better in compared to human insulin. This is one more paper which is published in 2008 simultaneously comparing again insulin as part versus human insulin. It was with Moshe Hod, uh, fetal and perinatal outcome in type 1 diabetes during pregnancy, a comparison of insulin as part with human insulin. Again, the results were all in the favor of insulin as part in compared to the human insulin. This faster acting insulin as part in GDF, this was a one paper uh, published from India, Supertik Bhattachare from Kolkata, he had talked about that uh, the better efficacy and safety aspect of insulin as part. This is one more paper which is talking about the fetal and perinatal outcome in type 1 diabetes who are put on a insulin as part in compared to human insulin in 322 subjects. And India is a unique opportunity and important responsibility. As I always say that somehow our glory of a health which is you know we are doing so much work in the world as far as health awareness is concerned and treatment is concerned but it is not glorified somehow always the media writes something which is wrong but in india only we are making the highest number of the molecules which is the cheapest in the world we provide all over the world anywhere in the world if you go any part of the world you will find that medicines are actually made in india and they are sold there so you know we and we are the one the doctors are also available 24 by 7 we are using not only online consultation from now, we are using online consultation before 20 years when the WhatsApp had come only or just simple message, you know, the all the time you are giving answers to all your patients and when your NRI patient come, then you, they realize that how important you are because you are giving them answer even middle of the night and they are calling you from US or Australia also. So, the importance of health care which we are delivering from India is not glorified in India, but internationally they people know it. And this is the pharmacy to the world 
the this was in a meeting which was in the health ministry and with the uh, all the people who are primarily responsible increasing the pharma business in india they are also talking that we should try to get each and every molecule in india if we, it is not been researched here definitely there is always a period when till it gets off level you can't use it in india but then the biological formulation even if it is available in the world and if it has become off patent we should try to make in india and this is what one of these insulin molecule as insulin as part is now off patent and now we have our own insulin as part which is made in india so this is and we are going to supply to many parts of the world so this is what the biosimilar and why we should use the biosimilar similar similarly like we were using the some of the molecules like now we started using our sglt2 and dpp4 to many of our patients who can't otherwise who were not affording these newer molecules and they were very costly but now we are using these molecules to each and every patient who can to whom we have to give so these biosimilar the primary concept was that it should become more affordable it should be have available across the country and it should be having accessibility to the patient also so these biosimilars which are now made in our country and which is affordable because they are cheaper comparatively they are available because across the country these indian companies can make them available across the country also and they are also accessible to the patients to whom they are required so they are almost 15 to 35% lower in the cost also what is biosimilar they are uh, similar nature in reference in terms of quality safety and efficacy so this is just for those who are not understanding there is a difference between a molecule which is generic and a a, a molecule which is uh, we are selling like for the medicine and when we are using the molecule like these insulin type of products biological products we use that if it is of similar efficacy similar safety and similar quality we call it biosimilar but they are not the difference between the generic and original there is a something different so the us fda had used that biological product is highly similar to reference product not with standing minor difference in clinically inactive components no clinically meaningful difference exists between a biological product and a reference products in terms of safety purity and a potency world health organization is saying that similar biotherapeutic product is a biotherapeutic product that is similar in terms of quality safety and efficacy to an already licensed biotherapeutic product so they should have almost everything in all aspects whether it's a quality safety efficacy purity and potency in all aspect they should be biosimilar and government of india dcgi they say that a similar biological product that is which similar in terms of quality safety and efficacy to an approved reference biological product based on its compatibility so these are the three different uh, definitions by emea us fda who and dcgi and what they define that what exactly biosimilar is and once biosimilar which is approved in india by dcgi or internationally if it is available in other parts of the world it has to be approved by these uh, different organization and then it is available to our patient and then there is a something known as interchangeability with the importance of interchangeability in our country is less because in european countries and a western world where they the pharmacists decide the therapy and he can change the prescription also because it is available at a cheaper price so that's what interchangeability and some of the indian products are now with the interchangeability license also even in us too so i am not going much detail about the requirement of a biosimilar because i am not the expert for that i am not a scientist of a biosimilar but what i mean to say that we need some of the products which are now of patent and even they are biological products before that we were getting generic medicines only but now we are getting even the biosimilar products also which are 20 to 35% cheaper for our patients more available and accessible and we can use for our patients too and they all are they have to undergo with a clinical trial just to show that they are similar similar efficacious point of view as well as safety also the first biosimilar insulin aspart so we were having biosimilar glargin which was available to our country with a long acting but this is first biosimilar insulin aspart which is now available in india in so quick it is 100% made in india we welcome our chief guest madam mayor and we are really thankful and grateful that you could come just within 1 minute madam i will be stopping it and we will be inviting you to inaugurate this session so first biosimilar insulin aspart 
which is available in India, which is 100% made in India with a global quality, with a global standard, with a CGMP production on facility and a strong IP portfolio for value creation. So first biosimilar recombinant insulin as part which was given approval in 2021 by DCGI and since last two months now it is available to us for using our this this first biosimilar insulin which is available again madam had already come so I will not be taking but it had shown all the data that it is equal similar efficacy safety and by all these means it is same with this uh, I will not be going for that to conclude my talk <laughs> So the take home message to conclude my talk, GDM require a very vigilant management. The early detection and effective management of GDM are crucial for health of both mother and child. The biosimilar insulin as part, a promising option, a present a cost effective, efficacious and a safe option in GDM management. It has comparable efficacy and a safety. It has got enhanced accessibility and affordability across the country and tailored based patient centric approach with the treatment of biosimilar insulin as part should be tailored to each and every patient and that is what the requirement instead of human insulin now even if it is a cost effective which is available across the country why can't we use it because that's what the post meal hyperglycemia is a major challenge for gdm considering the individual needs and condition with this i thank once again thank rutul and organizing committee and all of you for giving me this opportunity thank you thank you very thank much. you